Mr Thrive and Survive is a well-known flat earther that cannot for the life of him understand eclipses. He's got them wrong more times than I've had hot dinners and he's been proven wrong just as much as well. But does that stop him from coming back for more? No, of course it doesn't. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, I want to thank the sponsors of today's video, Mac Weldon. Mac Weldon is better than what you're wearing right now, period. They believe in smart design, premium fabrics and simple shopping. They are the premium essentials brand. With a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, Mac Weldon will be the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies and sweatpants that you'll ever wear. Not only do they look good, they perform well too. I've started using Mack Weldon underwear to run in 50 miles a week and they are an absolute game changer. They're perfect for everything. Working out, hanging out, at work, everything. The folks at Mack Weldon have also created a loyalty program called Weldon Blue. Level one will get you free shipping for life and level two, after you spent $200, you'll get 20% off every order for a year. I purchased some underwear, a nice pair of shorts and this super comfy top too. But as I said, the underwear is the winner for me. Super comfy and works brilliant when I'm running. I'm not going to show you those though. For 20% off your first order, visit macweldon.com forward slash Simandan and put in the code Simandan. Right back to Mr Thrive and Survive where today he's put a challenge in place for me regarding the moon shadow during an eclipse. Let's take a look and see how Rich is getting on, shall we? In a recent video I uploaded called The Shadow of the Sun Does Not Exist, I explained how the diameter of any blocking object is never exceeded in its shadow. We're going to see the importance of that in a second. This is a challenge because I've been told that Simon Dan would just tear this apart and... Uh, why don't I debate him about this? Well, okay, let's see if Simon Dan can actually come up with any concrete evidence to dispute what I have here. Let's see how much of a real science and observational person he is, because observation and marking your results, that's all part of science. Let's see if he can do something and refute me. Well, 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 hasn't this got off to an interesting start? If he can refute me, great. All right? Great. So let's see if he can actually do it. See, we get the same stuff. I hope this is just a joke. As always, you don't understand something, therefore we've been lied to. No, I understand it perfectly because I go out and actually do the observation. But I think what's crucial is that you misunderstand the observation and then you are adamant that you're correct. So here's the challenge. Here we go. Now I'm going to leave out a lot of what I've talked about before because everybody wants to hit on some little minutia of some little detail that you talk about if it isn't directly to the point. This is going to be very simple and we'll see if Simon Dan or anybody else can refute this. Always with the eclipses Rich and you still haven't learnt. Go online and look up eclipse or umbra penumbra. You're going to get dozens if not hundreds of diagrams of how this works. You will get something without exception. I don't care if it is an eclipse of the sun, eclipse of the moon, eclipse of a moon on another planet. You will always get the exact same thing. You're going to get an umbra, this dark part here, and you're going to get a penumbra. Well, that's because this is what happens. It's simple. You're going to get an umbra and a penumbra. And what else are you going to get? The penumbra, my argument is the penumbra does not exist. Ha, <laughs> good one, Rich. You're joking, right? But they need it to exist in their system. So can we prove that it exists or not? Let's notice one fact about the penumbra. It is larger than the diameter of the blocking object. Yep, we can all agree on that. I hope everybody can agree on that. Where the penumbra starts, even if you start at this very beginning point, it is bigger than the blocking object and it keeps getting bigger as it goes out. This does not exist in nature, at least not with our sun. 
You see, Rich, you can't make statements like that because it does. And that is my argument. The penumbra does not exist and you cannot show it exists. The shadow never is wider than the diameter of the blocking object. We shall see, Rich. We shall see. Now, we're not talking about using a shop light or a local light in your bathroom or a candle. We don't need that. We have the actual sun that we were shown in the diagrams that produces an umbra penumbra. Again, the argument is the penumbra does not exist when our sun is used as the light source and anything whatsoever is used as the blocking object. Without a penumbra, their system falls apart. You're digging yourself into a hole here, Thrive. Now, it has been erroneously argued by a few in the comments that, well, Rich, it's different if you have a big object like the moon blocking it versus something small here on Earth. No, there is no difference in the size of the blocking object. The mathematics and the science behind light does not change with the size of the object. We use mathematics to be able to tell how high or how far something is away by being able to use light and shadow. And it is not regard, there is no regard for the size of the object, how far away it is, nothing like that. He's really pinning a lot on this one, isn't he? That is not an argument. There is, now if you can find it where, oh, if, if it's uh, over a thousand square meters, uh, in diameter, then it's a different uh, type of situation. You're not going to find it, but I'd love to see you try to look for it. Now, just to be clear, we're talking about the diameter of the blocking object. The blocking object in this case is a tree. From the left part of where my mouse is now to the right is the diameter of the tree. This is a poor example to use. You can see that the shadow is stretched along the ground. Yes, it can be elongated if the sun is low in the sky. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the diameter itself has to produce uh, a certain size shadow, which is always equal to the diameter of the blocking object or less. It never produces a shadow wider than the bl blocking object. Which is why this is a bad example, because the shadow is wider here. I've tested this with all kind of different things. And I'll give a little example later of something specific that I tested with. I mean, I've, I've taken light posts when the sun was very low in the sky and gone out many hundreds of diameters of the light post, and it never produces a penumbra, and the shadow is never wider than the diameter of the blocking object itself. Yeah, that's groundbreaking, Rich. Well done. And just to make the point one more time... Oh, bloody hell, come on. It doesn't matter how big the object is or how wide it is. As you can see here, the buildings themselves produce shadows which are elongated because the sun is low, but never wider than the diameter of the blocking object itself. In other words, if you follow one of these shadows back to the building, or if you measured it on the ground here, how wide it was, you go up to the building and you're going to get the same measurement or... Maybe a little bit less, and maybe we'll explain that, or maybe I'll just leave that for Simon Dan to see if he can figure it out. Thanks, Rich. Now, as a baseline, I'm using the Great American Eclipse of 2017. This was a solar eclipse that went across the entire United States. The sun was at zenith for almost all the observers, or very close to zenith, so there was no elongation to even deal with. The shadow width at maximum on the Earth of totality was 72 miles. The diameter of the moon is about 2,159 miles and its average distance is about 238,000 miles. You take 238,000 miles divided by 2,159 and that means that the moon supposedly is 110.24 diameters distance from the Earth at the time of the eclipse. Right, okay, and what's that got to do with the price of fish? In other words, the moon cast its shadow 110.24 times its diameter distance to the Earth. Now, take an object, 
any size, although the larger the size, the higher you're going to have to go. Use the sun at zenith. I've done this. I've recorded it already on my phone. But let's see if Simon Dan can do this and see what he comes up with. Then I'll present my evidence. Okay, well, it's been a while since this video and I've been quite busy. So since this video has come out, two YouTubers have risen to the challenge and they have smashed it. First up is Mr. Sensible. This is just to de demonstrate a point. I'll use a color selection tool and select the white paper, delete it. You can see it quite happily has selected the entire paper. There's no artifacts or anything. The only thing it hasn't selected is the text and the drawn on circle. Point made. Let's get rid of that then. We'll now drop down the second image where the card was just lifting off. We'll do the same. We'll do a color select on the white paper, delete it. Just get rid of the selection lines. I'll zoom in a little just to make it clearer, but you can see again, it's happily got rid of all the paper, but left the shadow, the card, my fingers and so on. There is a slight outline that is actually penumbra, but I accept that it could easily look as though it's just artifacts of the uh, software. So let's carry on. We'll discard this one and we will now go to the third and final screen captured image. Once again, we'll color select on white and delete it. Get rid of the selection lines. And what do you know? You can see the shadow here. It's fading out. This is penumbra. Once you reach this point, it looks to the naked eye as though it's white, but it isn't. It actually goes outside the circle. That is shaded area. It is penumbra and it is larger than the circle. As you can see, pretty good evidence, right? Unfortunately for Rich, where's Wally had a go to? And he has absolutely crushed it. So anyway, okay to the data measuring. I just love the way Mr. Sensible did this, so I did exactly the same thing. I do just use the flood fill tool to make a defined edge at a constant level of black white. It was a good to discriminate using that. So looking at DSCN 5259, I rotated the image a little bit to square it up and then I cropped off some of the rubbish and then I hit the black select color and I dropped solid color square in the center. And then I did a flood fill of the white paper. The trick is the first time you do this is to fiddle with the percentage of your film and you get a good black white discrimination. But what you can't do is once you've decided on what percentage works well, you must use the same percentage for the rest of all the other drops. So you're nice and fair and consistent. Then I filled all the umbers as well. And then I drew some red circles to match the edges of the annulus, keeping the X and Y dimensions the same, so I know that I'm making a circle. And I recorded the pixel diameters for both the inner and the outer annulus. Then I subtracted them to get the annulus size in pixels. And then I did a neat little trick to figure out the pixel to millimeters by measuring a three centimeter scale. And that works out at 8.73. So once I had the inner and the outer diameters, I popped these into a spreadsheet, converted them to millimeters and plotted that on a graph. Now you see here the orange line is at the 66.7 blocking object diameter. And notice how the penumbra and the umbra both diverge away from 66.7. That's exactly what we'd expect to see. Wow, beautifully done, Wally. Well done. You can't get more conclusive than that, can you, Rich? Now, in fairness to Mr. Thrive and Survive, he did respond and accepted that Mr. Sensible did what he thought couldn't be done. He explained that he'd be live streaming a more accurate response as to why Mr. Sensible is still wrong. As of yet, we are yet to see that live stream. I think a full retraction and apology is required, Mr. Thrive and Survive, at the very least. What a wonderful way to end today's Flat Earth Friday. Remember, for 20% off your first order with Mac Weldon, visit macweldon.com slash simandan and use the code simandan at checkout. 
Thank you all very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you liked it, then please do like and subscribe. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you all on Tuesday for some more tinfoil fun. See you then.